Hey guys, how's it going? Richard here with Alien Bros, and today I have quite a bit of strange stuff that I want to share with you guys. As usual, first we have some awesome UFO sightings for you, and then afterwards, I want to tell you guys about a case of alien contact that odds are you've probably never heard of before, but it left the United States Air Force scratching their heads trying to cope with answers for this unsolved mystery. This is going to be the first video in a series I'm creating called Air Force Unsolved, where we go and we delve into Project Blue Book's unexplained cases to try to get a better understanding of what actually happened in each case. And this one is easily one of my favorite cases of contact with a UFO, because the evidence is just too solid to explain away. More on that later though. For now, let's get into the incredible UFO settings I have for you guys. This first sighting was captured over Miami, Florida on February 2nd of 2018, and it shows a sighting that can only be described as far out there. I'll go ahead and play the clip for you guys now, and we'll talk more on it afterwards, alright? Here it is. Three of them go. There were three of them that minute ago. I know. Well, one is up, one is up on top, way high, and then these two, and there's one below. There's only two. No, I see the one up. Okay. It's behind the cloud. One. That is weird. Hey, Josh, you want to see some UFOs, babe? Josh, come here. Josh! Get out of here, man. Oh my god. Today. Look at that. Where's our airplane, man? What do you think? Take a look at those. Yeah, they are. Okay, yeah, those airplanes flying together like that. Just, just, just sitting there. No, they've been like that. I've been watching them, they haven't moved. They're moving, but they're moving slow. No, they're getting aren't, farther those aren't apart. airplanes. Those aren't airplanes. Okay. What's the one on the left? Okay. So there's three of them. Whoa, the one on the right's gotten a little bright. Whoa, do you see how bright that is? Those? are not airplanes, man. They're not moving like airplanes. They're not doing anything like airplanes move. Yeah, or helicopters, right. for that matter. Get one right. Yeah, it's moving around. Yeah. I wonder why it got so bright. Yeah, it's been sitting on a lot in these, uh, in this neighborhood lately. Yeah, yeah it's flashing like a plane. Oh, it's not flashing like a plane. Please don't flash like that, man. Well, actually, they do. No, not like that. No, the one on the Planes move. They have to be moving at 150, 60 miles an hour to stay in the air. Those aren't moving 160 miles an hour. This is, what's the shape look like to you? It almost looks to me like it. Well, and then, and it just disappeared. Look. That's a cloud in the window. I don't know. Yeah, the other one disappeared too. Yeah, keep saying, keep thinking these are planes. There's a third one. Alright, so this sighting has a lot of strange elements to it. The hovering and slow movements of the object sticks out to me, of course, but what I found to be the most intriguing aspect of this case is when the object on the far right randomly illuminated and then starts moving towards the other objects with a flashing light that was not there before, almost as if it wanted to mimic aviation lights. These lights, however, do not appear to be your typical aviation lights, and the lack of movement from the other two objects, combined with the fact they flew as close to each other as they did, makes me think that there is no way this could be airplane planes or helicopters. I also don't think that these could be drones either. The objects were already emitting way too much light to be drones before the one illuminated to a level of light that no drone would be able to produce without an incredible amount of size and battery power. These objects are clearly quite large and having lived in the Fort Lauderdale area myself for a long time near the airport, I can say for sure that this behavior is not typical of a plane coming into land or anything mundane that would typically be seen in the sky that could trick you. The behavior of the objects also lets its rule out parachute flares as well, and it makes me wonder exactly what the witness that took this footage was seeing. To give you guys their take on it, I'll read you guys the witness's statement. The statement reads, For the last two weeks, Miami has been inundated with UFOs, and many nights we see Coast Guard choppers and helicopters with no lights buzzing around the UFOs. There have been boats in Biscayne Bay with no lights, and we have heard military jets multiple times. 
We live on the 33rd floor of a Miami high-rise and can look straight north over the Biscayne Bay with a completely unobstructed view. About two or so weeks ago, we started seeing whitish glowing orbs basically popping up in the sky out of nowhere. For the past few days, they were popping up further north and sometimes northeast over the ocean and moving very slowly to about 150th to 41st north and in the middle of the Biscayne Bay. They then hover for around 5 to 30 minutes at an altitude of approximately two to 4,000 feet moving up occasionally or in other directions when commercial aircraft are coming towards their locations and then becoming stationary again. When they move out of view, they start moving from a hovering position to the west towards the city or south over my building and climbing sometimes very high then out of view. I have a ton of video and still shots showing this and from directly underneath the objects. From underneath, they show different structural makeups. I would say maybe three or four different types of structures, including discs, tubes, boomerangs, and one other shape that I cannot discern. Never, never do they make any sound. They stay completely silent. They only come out at dusk and continue to perform odd behavior all throughout the night. These are not lanterns as they hover and then move in different directions other than the wind and sometimes zigzag out of commercial traffic's way. They are not drones either. Whatever is going on is the real deal and needs to be investigated immediately. I'll send some video and stills but have much more if you need to see. That is the end of the witness's statement. Now, I have said in past videos when I was still living in South Florida, about 45 minutes away from where this witness is located, that strange activity from these unknown objects in the sky has been ramping up and it does not seem to be showing any signs of slowing down. I think there is a chance that the witness caught something otherworldly here. It is like the objects are attempting to appear normal and are doing a very poor job of it since the ones captured in the sighting did a very poor job of mimicking typical terrestrial aircraft. I can also say that before I left Florida back in December, I did also notice a rise in military aircraft in the area and even stranger so, I witnessed multiple pure black helicopters flying both over my house in Boca Raton and other cities in South Florida such as Fort Lauderdale and even up a bit further north near West Palm Beach. What is the deal with these strange helicopters? They're usually spied around the same time that these strange objects are and I want to know what the deal is with them. Are they military? Maybe men in black? I want some answers here and I even more so want to know what these UFOs actually are. They're certainly a mystery at the moment and to me it's all very strange. Let me know what you guys think is going on with these sightings down in the comments and if you have any idea what the objects the witness in this case filmed are, then definitely let us know your thoughts on it. Alright, this next setting I saw originally posted by my friend the Hidden Underbelly 2.0 on his channel and I knew I had to share it because to put it simply, it is very cool. It was captured on August 1st of 2018 by Chancellor Baptiste over Bessoncourt, France and both the links to Chancellor and the Hidden Underbelly's video are down in the description if you want to check them out. This footage appears to show it can only be described as a cigar or possibly disc shaped object firing up what appears to be thrusters as it hovers in place. I'll go ahead and play you guys the clip and we'll talk more on it afterwards alright? Now check out this footage. So when it comes to this clip, I find the footage to be terrific, but it also raises a lot of questions in my mind. I don't know what this object could be, but I honestly don't believe this is an alien craft. I think it may possibly be government technology, however the thrusters on the object do not really coincide with what we normally see with the propulsion systems of potentially extraterrestrial aircraft. Usually we see craft that do not produce energy through thrusters, but instead seem to use an unknown form of propulsion that typically is not visible to us. Presumably they alter gravity and time, or use some sort of magnetic field disruptor to move forward. But with this object, we see what appears to be jets, and it makes me think that this craft likely is from Earth. But still, it is strange, and if it is military, we may be seeing some new form of military technology here. What do you guys think? Did this guy manage to capture a new military aircraft, or could this be something else? Be sure to leave your thoughts on this sighting down in the description and let everyone else know what you think this object is. 
even if it is an alien. The footage here is definitely really cool. Alright, moving forward now, I have some footage for you guys that seems to actually show what appears to be a fleet of UFOs, and I actually do think that they could be extraterrestrial. This footage was captured over Jacksonville, Florida on November 15th of 2016, which happens to be around the same time that most of us started to notice the increase in UFOs over Florida. It goes to show that both North and South Florida have been experiencing these strange objects in the sky, and the sightings have only been getting crazier. This is actually going to be two separate videos of the same event played back to back. I'll go ahead and play you guys the clips now, and we'll get into more on it afterwards, alright? Here it is. I mean, I'm guessing those are jets. I can't hear anything. They're moving. I don't know what that is. Unless it's a squadron of helicopters. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, we do have a lot of military around here. That's kind of weird. What the hell is that? I mean, they're not making any noise. And they're moving around. I mean, one of them's out of sight now. Maybe it's jets, but I don't know where they would have come from and why they would be. That's really weird, y'all. I mean, you can see them kind of there. Now three of them are gone. We're down to two only left. I mean, that's crazy, y'all. Alright, so the biggest thing that stuck out with this footage for me was the way that these objects simply faded out and disappeared at the end of the video. The second thing that stuck out to me was the weird formation of the objects and how they seemed to be in sync with one another. I doubt this could be drones due to the height in the sky and the distance of the witness from the objects. They are far too bright and large to be drones. If they were, they would not appear as large and as clear as they do in this footage. These are definitely some weird objects. I'll go ahead and read you guys the witness's statement now. The statement reads, I saw and videoed what looked to be a group of five bright lights upon the horizon. I have two videos of the event. They were moving around in no straight pattern, and they were gone in a minute and a half. They were very bright, much brighter than a star, too fast and high for helicopters and too quiet for jets, just very curious as to what it was. That is the end of the witness's statement. What could these objects be? The whole sighting is just very strange, and I think this is definitely an awesome capture. Let me know what you guys think about this sighting down in the comments, and if you have any footage of your own or more information on this particular sighting, then definitely send us over an email. Alright, let's get into the main topic of this video. I want to tell you guys about a UFO encounter which was investigated by the United States Air Force program, Project Blue Book, and as I mentioned in the start of this video, it is still to this day unexplained. On a humid August night in 1952, Scoutmaster D.S. Sonny Desvergers emerged burned and barely coherent from a dense palmetto grove in the South Florida Everglades. He claimed he had encountered an unidentified flying object that discharged a fireball, which left him singed and barely able to see. Captain Edward J. Rootfeld, chief UFO investigator for the U.S. Air Force, later would label the event the best hoax in UFO history. But the Desvergers incident remains one of the most intriguing cases from Project Blue Book, the Air Force's now declassified investigation into UFOs, which I have spoke about in the past on this channel, so for those of you that don't know what Project Blue Book is, I definitely recommend going back and watching these videos. And this is because it wasn't just a sighting incident, but one involving a purported attack. And as I already mentioned, it is still to this day unsolved. The story goes that hardware store clerk and scoutmaster Des Vergers, 30 years old, was driving a group of Boy Scouts home when he saw a bright light flash over a military trail near West Palm Beach, Florida. Thinking it may be a downed plane or car accident, Des Vergers pulled onto the shoulder of the highway so he could take a closer look. Armed with a machete and flashlights, he entered the Palmetto Grove near where he saw the lights, leaving the three boys in the vehicle with instructions to alert the residents of the nearby farmhouse if he did not return within 15 minutes. According to the now declassified Project Blue Book documents, after about four minutes of hacking through the dense bushes, Desvergers entered a clearing in the grove. The first thing he described was an acute, nauseating smell and then the feeling of somebody or something watching him. 
He next experienced a sensation of oven-like heat coming from above. Looking up, Desverger said he could not see any stars as he was standing beneath a hovering object. The object was circular. Desvergers recounted that it was a dull black with no seams about 30 feet in diameter with a height of 10 feet and a convex dome on top of it and the bottom edge was lit with a phosphorescent glow. What happened next is what separates Desvergers' encounter from thousands of other UFO sightings. As he slowly moved backwards, he recalled he heard a noise like metal against metal, like a hatch opening after which a red flare-like light came from the side of the object and slowly moved towards him. Disvergers constantly referred to it as a ship when recounting the tale to the authorities. As he placed his hands over his face, fists closed, one hand over each eye, the red ball of light grew into a red mist, engulfing him. It was then he recounted that he lost consciousness. When he awoke, Desverger said he was leaning against a tree but could not see properly as his eyes had been burned. Scrambling back through the palmettos, his eyesight slowly returning to normal, he burst incoherent out onto the highway where he was met by the boys and local authorities. The three scouts, Bobby Ruffing, 12, David Rowan, 11, and Chuck Stevens, 10, remained in the car after Desverger's entered the grove. Later in recounting what he witnessed to authorities, Ruffing said he initially saw a semicircle of white lights descending into the trees. Ruffing also recounted seeing a red light through the brush, as did Rowan and Stevens, who told of also seeing Desverger's flashlight through the trees before going dark. That's when the scouts headed to the nearby farmhouse for help. A Palm Beach County deputy and Lake Worth constable responded to the farmer's call for assistance. Returning to the site of the abandoned vehicle almost an hour after Desverger's first said he saw the lights, the officers and scouts witnessed the scoutmaster emerge from the palmettos, waving his machete and babbling incoherently. In Rupelt's investigation, the deputy is recorded as saying, In all of my 19 years of law enforcement work, I've never seen anyone as terrified as he was. Back at the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, Desvergers and the boys underwent questioning. Officers noted that the hair on Desverger's forearms were singed and the skin was burned. They also noted three tiny burn holes in the bill of the scoutmaster's cap. Following procedure, the local authorities contacted relevant agencies with the incident report, which eventually made its way to Blue Book Chief Rupel. He later described the case as one of the weirdest UFO reports I have ever came up against. Arriving in Florida soon after the encounter, Rupelt and his team began their investigation, obtaining statements from all parties involved and taking grass and soil specimens from the clearing in which Des Verges said the encounter took place. The latter evidence would prove to be the most inexplicable piece of the encounter puzzle. Jeffrey Wilson, a crop circle researcher, stated that the fact that they documented and took samples at all is lucky, and one of the most interesting aspects of this case. Jeffrey Wilson is a private industry analyst who examines noteworthy ground phenomenon and also is a co-founder of the Independent Crop Circle Researchers Association, or ICCRA. Wilson typically investigates global circle phenomenon, and though different to crop circles he examines today, aspects of the Desvergers incident led him to further investigate the incident. As the grass specimens were being tested, Desverger's character had come under intense scrutiny, with authorities noting his other than honorable discharge from the U.S. Marines due to the theft of a car, and what Florida locals would describe as his ability to tell tall tales. But when Rupel first interviewed Desvergers, he described the scoutmaster as likable, willing to cooperate, and displaying the immediate impression that he was telling the truth. Taking into account the background checks on Desvergers, along with the return visit to the encounter site where he determined that the Boy Scouts could not have witnessed Desvergers and a mysterious red light in the grove due to their distance and the denseness of the foliage. Rupelt would later call the entire event a hoax. Desvergers was painted as an opportunist and a media-hungry con man who sold his story to the American Weekly newspaper the following year. Though Rupel would come to believe that the tale was fabricated, and he and his team would come up with dozens of ways that the event could have been staged, they never managed to prove the incident was, in fact, a hoax. Their biggest stumbling block? The grass samples taken at the site. After samples from the Florida clearing were sent to Battelle Memorial Institute, under contract with the United States Air Force at the time to provide scientific support to Project Blue Book, Agronomist made the interesting finding that though the soil remained consistent, the root structure of the plants in question were charred black, and the lower leaves had deteriorated, as if by heat. The only way the lab could come close to duplicating the effect was to place live clumps of grass in a pan of sandy soil and heat it to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Though Wilson had witnessed singed grass in his investigations into ground phenomenon before, it has always been an occurrence above the soil, never the roots, as the lab findings indicated in the Desvergers case. Wilson says this is the only recorded example of such findings of which that he is aware. 
with those associated with the case no longer able to comment or add context as Fergers and Rootbelt have both since died, the case remains unexplained, but according to Wilson, something unusual happened to the guy and the physical evidence backed him up. That's why I put the effort into checking this out. Why would you go to the trouble of faking something like this? Now, my biggest question regarding this case is why and how would someone stage this event? None of it makes any sense. I personally never heard of any other UFO landing or contact case where the roots of the grass that the object supposedly landed on were burnt. It certainly is an unusual case to say the least, and I honestly think that this was an authentic case of contact with a UFO. It just has too much going for it, and if the Air Force couldn't come up with a real explanation for it back then, when every UFO was supposedly swamp gas or lights reflecting off of Venus, then I think there has to be a lot more to this case than the Air Force would like us to believe. Let me know what you guys think about this incident down in the comments. Do you think it happened the way the Despergers claimed? Definitely let us know what you guys think truly happened on that faithful Florida night in 1952. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today, but stay tuned because there is a lot more coming and we will have it posted very soon. If you liked the video, then please don't forget to smash that like button on your way out, share it, comment, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell. It really helps us out and it'll let you guys stay up to date by sending you a message straight to your inbox every time we upload a video. And you can stay on the up and up with all the latest alternative news. And remember, you have to hit the bell button or YouTube will not notify you when our new videos come out. Unfortunately, just subscribing on YouTube simply isn't enough these days since YouTube seems to want to pick and choose the content people see, but that won't stop us from moving forward. Also, if you want updates on when our videos will be coming out, then please go follow our Facebook page. The link is down in the video description. If you have some UFO footage or evidence that you would like us to feature on the channel, then please email it over to us. Our email is down in the description as well, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if you guys want to help keep this channel going strong, the donating even $1 a month to our Patreon would be extremely appreciated because YouTube isn't paying us, so this is all out of pocket for us. However, as I've said many times before, we love it and won't be quitting anytime soon, nor will we give up the fight to YouTube. Thanks again for your support, guys. It means a lot to us, and don't forget to browse the channel if you're new and get yourself up to speed. As always, I'm Richard with Alien Bros, and I'll see you guys again next video.